model car fans. Welcome to the Muscle Car Modeler. My name is Ral, and today I'm going to feature a couple of my builds here. This is uh, the Ravel Monogram 66 Shelby GT350 Hertz uh, edition. And uh, for 66, Shelby was looking to expand his exposure basically. And he knew about the Hertz Rent a Racer program. So he had a black prototype built of one of these. And uh, he, he uh, sent it off and to Hertz for their evaluation to see what they thought about it. And uh, they did like it. They had one request, though, on the original. It did not have the H on it, so they asked if he does it, could they put the H after GT350? And uh, he obliged. They, they built that car, and the, the prototype was a four-speed, and they asked for um, another one to be built as an automatic. So they built a, a second one and sent it to... Hertz and they were pretty excited so they decided that they would place an order um, the initial order of 200 cars a total of 1001 were actually built Shelby was pretty excited it's like alright let's get that going and um, through some confusion between Ford Shelby and Hertz the first 85 cars were sticks and uh, Hertz was not too thrilled about it I understand that uh, they wanted automatics for their for their drivers and uh, so that's what uh, they ended up, most of them are automatics. Another thing was, they were not all um, black. Most of them are black and automatic, but not every single one of them. And uh, they would also offered them in Wimbledon white, ivy green, sapphire blue, and uh, candy apple red. So they're available in five colors. And But all of them came with the gold stripes. Matter of fact, that kind of made it a little interesting reading about what Shelby had offered Shelby said he would you know he sold them to Hertz at the same price he sold them to the dealers what made it a little bit cheaper was he said he would paint all of them with the gold demand stripes for free now in 66 a side stripe was a decal in 65 that was painted on uh, the GT 350s but in 66 they turned that into a decal so on the Hertz ones, they had, uh, those are, I believe, decals as well. But the Le Mans stripes were painted all, all the way down uh, the roof. Shelby didn't charge him for that. He did all of them that way. So the first 200 um, were done, and they were out, and then they started to get some reviews and some problems because these things, they were more of a race car, but they were toned down a little bit for the street than uh, um, Shelby originally, his original 65. Um but I'll get into more of the, of the 66s and changes on another video because I'm going to focus strictly on the Hertz edition here. But on these, they had semi-competition metallic brake linings and no uh, power brakes. So they had a problem, Hertz had a problem with people running into things, especially when the brakes were cold, because you had to heat up the metallic linings and then the brakes would work a lot better, which was great for racing, but really not for the street. So they were having some problems with that. Some of them actually got a different master cylinder to kind of change the pressures. And some of them, um, brake boosters were added to them. So there's, there's those going on. And then others, um, they put a sticker on the dash that warned the driver that this vehicle is equipped with uh, semi-metallic competition brakes. Uh, higher than normal brake pressure is required to operate these brakes, trying to warn people. It was taken off really well with Hertz, and the demand was so high that Hertz ordered an additional 800 cars, which was more than Shelby even produced in 65. Kind of put them into a little bit of a panic. Shelby envisioned all of them being black and gold, but Hertz was, you know, it's like, no, they can be other colors. Um, don't really have the details on that, but like I said, there were others made in other colors. Matter of fact, in the Brothers Collection, they featured a... Uh, red one with gold stripes and a four speed um, so pretty finding a, a four speed manual in any of the other colors is kind of rare I don't know how many actual four speeds versus automatics but a bulk of these Hertz cars were all done in uh, uh, black so when you see them that's what you see so I had uh, built these two so I'll get more into the build here this one back here that's actually my original build from the, the late 80s when the kit first came out. And uh, I kept it. It's a little little worn and, you know, um, but it's my original build. And I had wanted to build another one. And 
So this is my second build from uh, 10 years ago or more. But uh, so we'll get more into this one. Now this one, not really box stock. I did change the wheels out for these uh, um, Torque Thrust D style because I really liked those wheels at the time. You can kind of see the paint so it needs some a good cleaning and, and polishing, but I didn't even do that. I left this one alone. But I changed the wheels out and I didn't do anything else really to the model kit on this one. You can see the whole underside is pretty much all brush painted. And um, so I, I, I'm not sure this was airbrushed or, you know, I didn't, I pretty much brush painted everything. But the body, I think I spray painted. I don't even think I airbrushed this one. But I really don't know how old it is. And here's the engine. But built it pretty much right out of the box. But she's been with me a long time. And I've displayed it a long time. The, the lenses have frosted a little bit from the glue. The headlights there. And then this is my more recent build. And this one became kind of a, a strategy because the club that I'm in, the Cactus Car Modelers, well, it's really not just the Cactus Car Modelers, but I'm in the Cactus Car Modelers, but we also have Moonlight Modelers. But some of the guys, they have on occasion, um, usually um, a, a three-day weekend, um, they would have a 24-hour build session. And the, the concept behind it was, you take an unstarted model, preferably sealed or sealed inside. Mine was technically sealed inside. The inner bag was not broken, but the outer bag was. And you take that 24 hours and you build it from start to finish and sleeping is optional. So it takes some strategy. So this was, I actually brought this one and another one, but I bought this one to that build session and I did complete this one in that uh, 24 hour session. But then it takes some strategy, some thoughts on how you're going to do this. So I know this one is spray painted with Tamiya spray paint. And, um, you know, obviously, you know, picking something that's all black and very little limited color options makes it a little easier. And knowing that you're spraying it with, um, um, the, like, Tamiya, it's a synthetic lacquer, so it dries pretty fast. So the first thing you do is get the body work done, get everything fitted, you know, rough it up, paint the body, give it a few hours to dry, and then you start painting all the interior. Well, I airbrushed, you know, we had an airbrush we could bring, so I brought my airbrush, and but the semi-gloss that you spray the underside with and all the detail parts, you can do that. I sprayed the engine, get that ready, and start painting everything. And then I start working on the motor, get the 289 assembled and ready for paint and get a few things fitted then get it painted blue get uh, everything else uh, semi-gloss black and then by then hopefully the paint is dry on the body put the decals on which these ones went on fairly well I'm at the point now where I pretty much paint these decals on instead of uh, but these ones laid down I've had trouble with some of the later kits where the decals are even harder to get to sit but I got these down and uh, so get it all painted, get the decals on, clear coat it, same thing to me a spray, let that uh, dry and uh, start assembling everything and manage to squeeze a few hours of sleep in here and there. But I did manage to get this one built in that 24 hour build session and man it was a lot of fun hanging out with the guys and the, the long night and, and staying up there and sleeping on the couch for a few hours. But uh, that was um, quite an adventure and you know they've done it a few other times I haven't been able to attend as many of them but uh, that was that was quite a blast and this this Ravel monogram kit I've mentioned before it's one of my favorites I just you know it, the, the kit just goes together really easily and looks really really good and it's a fairly simple kit to build and like I said there's here's two I built I've already shown you the 65 GT350 and then another 66 that I built as a custom. Um, there was a few others that I have built that I haven't shown you yet. And I've got many more in the stash and many more planned. I'd actually would like to do one of the 66 GT350s in another color and put the supercharger on it. But um, I'd have to scratch build a supercharger or see if somebody will 3D print one or 
take on that project and and change out the wheels a little bit um, to a different wheel other than uh, the magnums on this one or you can go custom wheels like I did on that one but um, that's uh, pretty much going to do it for this one and, and the specific story of the GT350H and there are lots of uh, stories of what happened to these cars what they went through many of them turning up missing Shelby parts some of them they say are greatly exaggerated and some raced and some with the motors that turned up with a stock motor from another Mustang in it when it was turned in but uh, there's a lot of fun reading about those stories too when it comes to the story on these cars and what they've been through but um, great car and, and you know more than with a, a, an order of a thousand that's quite a big jump so there's a lot more 66's but uh, uh, great car and just one of my one of my favorites I just I, I love all the Shelby so you'll you'll notice that when I start featuring a lot of these high performance Fords but uh, thank you guys for uh, subscribing and tuning in and and if you like this contact please subscribe and hit the bell button you'll get the latest uploads that I, I put up and you know, I've been putting up videos every Saturday so thank you for subscribing and tuning in and I will see you next Saturday you have a good day